awesome video on RTC Channel 4. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Doing great. How are you? Good. Brian is here from RTC. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having us. All right. And of course, on the TuneIn Radio app, you can download it, take us wherever you happen to be going. And John Alley stopped by to say hello this morning. Good morning. Hi, John. How are you? Doing great. Doing John great. is President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital and the hospital board in session yesterday. We had our board meeting yesterday, a fairly short meeting. One of the board members let us know what time we were going to be done, and so we got done <laughs> one minute prior to that deadline. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, this time of year, not a lot of things that we really have to discuss. Now, the next board meeting will probably be a little longer because we do have some year-end items that we need to get done in December so that uh, we can start the new year off right. So. One of the first things we did was actually present to our board was what is our budget going to be for next year? Uh, been working on it since July, trying right. to fine tune it and get it where it needs to be. So we give it to them this month, they'll have a month to look at it and then bring it back next month for formal approval or if they have some questions on it. But I'm pretty sure we'll probably uh, they'll approve it as we went through some just, you know, kind of our standard things. Look at uh, enough of a rate increase to cover our increased cost of the uh, supplies. It's kind of nice. Most of our suppliers, being the, the nice people, tell us what our rate increase is going to be next right. year. So they'll come in and say, hey, our stuff is going to go up 5%, 6 whatever. So we try to then build our rate increase to at least cover that cost of those additional supply costs as we move into the next year. Um, you know, healthcare is getting more and more competitive, and, and what we found is we're looking for a fairly small margin next year again, uh, hopefully three to 400000 bottom line which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's even worse when I say we're probably going to be budgeting about $140 million in gross revenue. Exactly. And wind up with, you know, 300000 So that kind of tells you it's a fairly uh, cutthroat business, and if we can come out with three or 400000 we'll be very happy. Overall budget comparable to this year? Comparable this year, yeah. I think our uh, we predicted probably about a 400000 bottom line for this year. Uh, Go to get close to that, and you know when we look at our financials, it's distorted a little bit because of some of our affiliations with some of the nursing homes. So what I like to do is take that money out. Um, I don't count that when I look at, even though it's in our financials from an internal perspective, we, we take that. How are we doing just as an institution? And so far through uh, uh, end of October, we've broke even. We haven't made money, but we haven't lost money. So I'm okay with that, uh, you know, because we're hoping November, December right now are looking like they're going to be a fairly good month. Traditionally, they've been very bad months for the hospital, but uh, for whatever reason, uh, we're seeing a tremendous increase in volumes in November that we haven't seen before. Hoping that carries through through December. After the budget is passed by the Board of Trustees, what happens to it? At that point, there's a lot of other folks we have to give it to. Um, you know, a lot of folks don't realize, but all of our insurance agents, carriers that we have contracts with, we have to submit it to them. They have to approve our budget. And, uh, you know, if they don't like what we submit, then they say, well, fine, you know, you're doing a, a X percent rate increase, we're not going to recognize it. So uh, we have to do it to them. State Board of Accounts gets a copy of it. Uh, Medicare gets a copy of that. So we, a lot of folks have to review and approve what our budget is going to be. So it's uh, not like your, you know, your normal manufacturing where you set your budget and go. We have a lot of folks that we have to run it by, get their approval before we can put it in place. These contracts, these agreements that you have with the insurance companies particularly, they're just an annual? They're annual renewing. So usually they come up every year. We might sign a five-year contract, but every year we have to go back and, especially if we're doing anything on our rates, go back to that insurance company and say, here's what we're wanting to do, here's why we want to do it and justify why we're going to do a rate increase and they either accept it or they don't and sometimes they say you can do whatever you want with your rates we're not we're not going to recognize it so whatever we paid you last year same thing we're paying you this year so it, you know that's part of that whole budget process we're trying to second guess what some of the major insurance companies are going to do when we look at our governmental like the Medicaid Medicare that's pretty well set we, we know what that percentage is going to be and once again they don't care what our rates are it's a flat per you know, dollar amount that they're going to give us. So they say, charge what you want. Here's all we're going to pay. So that makes it a little difficult when we start seeing, you know, the large increases in supply costs. If Medicare, Medicaid doesn't want to recognize or doesn't match those, you know, then each year we're kind of getting a little deeper, deeper in the hole. And, uh, you know, like anything else, the government, government's trying to save their money watching their budget. They're under the same scrutiny that everybody else is. So we're not anticipating a, a any increase in the governmental reimbursement for next year. So we got to try how can we maintain a profit for the hospital and, and still 
do the services we need to do. Now, Medicaid and Medicare are two different uh, groups or two, two new things right. you deal with, right? Yeah, the Medicare program is a federal right. health insurance. Right. Medicaid is it's a state program that's partially funded by federal government. Okay. So, you know, they, they kind of overlap a little bit, but the Medicaid is mostly a state program. Medicare is a federal program. Okay. All right, other notes from the board meeting yesterday. We just wanted to remind them uh, it's time again. About every three to five years, we want to do what we call a strategic planning retreat, and that's where we sit down and say, here's where we are. Where do we want to be in the next three to five years? And we usually bring a person in from the outside that uh, does this across the country because what I like to know, what's happening on the East Coast, what's happening on the West Coast that we might not know that he's seeing some trends out there. So that will be uh, next Tuesday from 9 to 3 in the boardroom. We'll have uh, all the board, the administrative team, and then the facilitator who comes in and says, okay, have you thought about this? You need to look at that. So what we want to do now is map out our next three to five years strategically what we want to do and where we want to be at the end of that point. Is that possible? <laughs> no, but we give it a darn good try. I understand. Uh, you know, I understand. Healthcare is so volatile. So what we try to look at is what is the trends, emerging trends now that's going to be really in place next two to three to five years so that we're ready for those. I, I don't want to be the leader in that pack, but I want to tail end either. So make sure we're ready, aware of what's coming, so we're prepared and can react to whatever might happen in the as we move to the next three to five years. I think we had this conversation a couple of years ago as we talked about Affordable Care Act and what it was going to be doing yes. in the hospitals. And it's, uh, you know, as we're looking now, we've always talked about our bad debt and our compassionate care that we write off. Right. We're seeing a, a fairly significant decline in it now as we're getting more and more folks in the community signed up for some sort of health insurance program as it, you know, a lot of them are mandated, you have to have it, uh, and if you don't, there's a penalty you, know, you pay on your tax return. So we're seeing, a, and to me, a dramatic decrease in that is a half a percent. Uh, you know, we're seeing some decreases in those numbers, which is telling me we're having more folks moving over to some sort of health insurance product. So even though we're not getting paid a lot, it's better than nothing. I was going to say, is that, that's, that's a good thing for one Yes, hospital. it's a good thing. You right. know, I, I just soon get two cents on the dollar as opposed to zero cents on the right. dollar and it is making a difference. So we're seeing a little bit increase there. It's, it's helped our cash position because now we're not writing off 100% of the bills. We're getting a little bit of that. And uh, one of the points I just kind of wanted to bring up, you know, okay. we, we do have folks in-house, uh, Has an, there's an office in the hospital now and a company's called Claymate. They're there Monday, Tuesdays and Fridays, 8 to 4.30, Thursdays 1 to 5. And what they do, they help you get enrolled in either one of the marketplace accounts are in HIP2, which is a state Medicaid program. No cost to, to you. You come in, sit down with that counselor. They do most of the paperwork for you because when you really look at what's required there, there is a ton of paperwork that you exactly. have to do to get in these programs. And I you know, looked at that and I said, I'd be halfway through it and I'd say, I'm done. It, it's, it's overwhelming for somebody that doesn't know how this process works to try to fill out that paperwork. So. You know, we have a super young lady in there which sits down with you and does the paperwork. She knows what takes to get done. So, you know, if it's something that you've put off saying, I don't want to mess with, please come see them. Uh, the phone number is 224-1049. You can set up an appointment, come in, sit down with her. And if it's nothing else, you've got questions on what you currently have. She can help answer that because health insurance is an extremely complicated problem right now. You know what's covered, what's not covered, and they can help walk through that program with you. And it's been very beneficial for the hospital. And so they can also tell you what you need to show them as far as proof of income and things like that. Correct. They know exactly what you need, what needs to be submitted, and the best part is they do 99% of that That's for cool. you. So they know the shortcuts and uh, you know what might take you or I a month to get done. They might have done it in a day or two because they know how to get that done. So you'll see ours the phone number again, John. Yeah, you, please. Monday, Tuesdays, and Friday. 8 to 4.30, okay. Thursdays 1 to 5, and you can call 224-1049 to talk to her, set up the appointment, and it's uh, right as you come in, the, the visitor's entrance is right next to the uh, cashier area. They've got a little office set up there, and it's very private, and uh, I encourage, if you've been yeah. putting it off, please come in. It not only helps you, it also helps support your local health care, not only the hospital, but all your physicians, because now it helps them with a little bit reimbursement, a little bit of cash, so they can continue to serve the community. Sooner or later, those penalties are going to become more, or are going to become a little stiffer than what they are now. Right. In this, terms it's of going to ramp up, and, like and you're that. going to so see yes, as you is. move you into the is. future, the, the right. penalties are going to be much, much stiffer. Right. So go ahead and get it done. Yep. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks said, well, I didn't realize how much 
subsidy I qualified for, so it's, it's not costing them a lot of money for this coverage because they qualify for a lot of the subsidy programs, both state and federal. Okay. Uh, the other thing we talked about was basically how financially, how did we do for October? Okay. Uh, had about 10.5 million was our gross revenue. Our deductions was 5.7 million. Still a large number, but smaller than what it has been. <laughs> okay. We had operating revenue of 4.8 million. Operating expenses was just a little over 3 million. So we was actually able to come in with a 654, $655,000 profit. That's a you know a little misleading because about 50% of that was some state Medicaid money from two years ago. They're still settling up from you know prior years. So we got right around 300,000 came in in the month of October to help close out some previous years. So just off operations, we, again, did about $300,000 profit. Well, that's a good month. For that's a good month. month. Uh, you know, I'm very happy with that. Uh, again, looking at uh, our daily census, when I just look at inpatients, I was concerned. We're seeing that shift like everybody else is now to more of an outpatient healthcare provider. And it's nationwide. I've attended a couple conferences, and that's been just kind of the talk among all the CEOs and CFOs is, I'm seeing a major decline in my inpatient business, outpatient revenues going through the ceiling. So we're seeing that shift now to more of an outpatient setting. Some of the new hospitals uh, that are being constructed uh, out west, they're only doing six to eight inpatient beds. Everything else is an outpatient and their comment is, I've got other big tertiary care centers close to me. If I need the inpatient, we transfer it to there. So, you know, it. Uh, I think we're seeing a, a a change in how healthcare is being delivered to more of an outpatient and that's part of what we want this uh, consultant to help us with as we look at our strategic plan what do we need to do today so that we're ready for that three to five years down the road well you and I've had this discussion over the last few months about one of the things that you'd like to see done are some of the rooms renovated at Woodlawn Hospital now the question becomes how many of those correct in terms of what's happening with outpatients today need to be renovated yeah so we, we've kind of you know I thought I had it all planned out knew exactly what I was going to do <laughs> now that we're seeing this trend it's kind of back to, to square one and we're starting over saying maybe we don't want to do 25 rooms do I want to do fewer inpatient rooms and change some of the what's currently an inpatient setting to an outpatient service area. So it's, uh, you know, I, I just, I got to dust off that crystal ball, I think, once again, and try to figure out where we're going to go with this as we move to the future. John, from your perspective, from the perspective of the board, uh, good supply right now of doctors and nurses? Yes. Um, you know, it's uh, like anything else, the biggest area of concern is still primary care physicians. Uh, when I talk to the students in the medical schools, a lot of them, their, fa their father, their uncle, their mother, somebody in their family has been a primary care physician. They say, I don't want to do that. I don't want to work seven days a week on call all the time. So, you know, I, I call it the, the ologist syndrome. They all want to be somethingologists because they only work three to four days a week, no holidays, no call, and they probably make twice as much as what a family practice physician makes. So it's taken a very dedicated person now to come out and say, I want to be a family practice physician. They're out there. They're just really hard to find, and uh, so. But you know, a demand for them, I would think. There's a high demand for right. it, and uh, we're seeing more and more uh, providers now coming out from a nurse practitioner instead of an of MD or a DO, because they're more readily available than we can find, you know, MDs and DOs. And, but you still have to have a collaborating physician to work with them. So it's uh, it's the challenge is find folks to do family practice, family care. I can find a lot of ologists, uh, <laughs> but I, I need you know family practice and. You know, I, I'm, I've got to look five, six years down the road. I know I've probably got some physicians that are, you know, they keep saying, I'm, I'm, I'm going to retire, retire I'm going to retire. Sure. Sure. And uh, so I'm preparing now for some of those that might be leaving five, six, seven years down the road because I'm going to the, some of the medical schools, getting these kids early and saying, are you interested in family practice? If so, consider Woodlawn. So we've got a couple that we've talked to that really want to go to a rule setting and do family practice. So, you know, I'm, I'm keeping their phone number very close and I don't want them to get away. And we pretty well covered the board meeting yesterday? Covered the board meeting. Very short board okay. meeting. Um, again, this time of year they're usually short. Next will be a little longer. I'm just about to say, I was going to ask you about it that. It might be a little longer because we'll probably get a little more detail into the budget. This month was just, here it is, we'll discuss it next month. John Alec, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. Anything else you'd like to report on this morning? Just, uh, you know, as we move into this holiday season, remember safe food practice for tomorrow. Uh, we don't want to see you by accident in the ER. So just be careful with some of the foods and, 
and uh, don't leave them sit out all day long and you know have lunch and ten o'clock at night start munching on the potato salad that's been out all day. Uh, you know, refrigerate, cover the foods, keep them safe for uh, those leftovers are the best part. Keep them safe. A lot of common sense. Yes, sir. John Alley, happy Thanksgiving. Same to you. Thank all you. Right.